September 1st, 2011. Woo, another month. Expect many posts to be happening over this Friday, weekend, and Monday. Alright, so I managed to complete the Happy Happy game. However, due to me being tired, I can only provide a quick detail of the game for now. The plot is the same. Happy hears about the golden apple and does stuff to get to it. It's pretty much the same game, except for difference. The differences that were in the game. First, there is a lot more rooms, with more kids, which you could save for points. But you already know that. Happy can obtain new powers, like Water Happy, who can survive underwater. Fast Happy, who can run, jump over large pits. And Strong Happy, who can remove rocks that block your way. The visuals are improved. Unlike the prototype, which led to some blank rooms, like Happy's van, many things are now complete. Also, a glitch was fixed at the endless staircase, which makes it endless. There's also bosses, like Nega Happy, a version of Happy Happy that has a shadow link, copying your moves. Now, here's the one that does bad stuff happens. I already talked about the bad ending, of how Happy dies, dies when eating the golden apple. Well, it fixed the ending for the worst. After Happy dies from eating the golden apple, a kid walks in and sees Happy's dead body and takes their own life. Ending of the game, the neutral ending of your song is get over 10,000 points. Happy doesn't die from eating the apple, but the apple works at a random, healing some kids at some times, but other times it doesn't. The last one is when your most heartwarming ending. You must get over 50,000 points or over, defeat every boss and save every kid. Happy eats the apple, and the apple works fully, healing any kid that gets injured. But it even gets worse. A whole lot worse. Along with the plot of the game, there are two bullies who follow Happy Happy. And that's where the MP3 of the people we're talking about, Happy in the cave. Depending on these requirements, their outcomes are very... All of them will require you to have the best ending. 1. If you do it in fast time, Happy just ignores the bullies. If you do it in a medium time, Happy will tell the bullies to mind their own business, and they get upset and leave. 3. If you do it in over 24 hours, Happy will get mad and drive him into the van, while screaming, STAND STILL! Miranda's death was much more quicker! The last ending was where Happy drives the van to the bullies away. Something happens in the neutral ending, but not in the bad ending. And guess who I saw today? I, fought, I saw Force Nick again. But this time I got a good look at the part of his face. As well as I could simply say that he might be human. Might be. September 2nd, 2011. This post isn't about Happy Happy and the Golden Apple, but it's about a new discovery I found while searching the torrents for Happy Happy. It was a torrent intact version of Happy Happy movie bonus features. Visually, it wasn't good. Just a simple menu with a wide background. There were one bonus feature, how happy was made. I decided to see it. It was around 30 minutes long and it showed the making of the new episodes, which wasn't released, called Happy Meets the Rhubars, where Happy Happy is in a crossover with the Appendix Dix Twin. Here's what happens according to the clip shown. Happy's in the playground, where he sees a rhubar playing around. Happy asks who he is, and the rhubarb bear doesn't respond. Richard drives along in his van in his limo from Window Liquor. Happy and Rubear heal a kid who accidentally hit his head on the swings. According to a worker, this episode will appear in Season 2, of course. Season 2 never aired. September 3rd, 2011. Okay, so there's two things I want to talk about on this blog post. First off, I have been hearing rumors that there is an actual episode of Season 2 intact, but it's majority incomplete from Restoration. Why would they have fans incomplete? Like 90% incomplete. The rumor states that there was a very fast episode of Season 2 called Camp A. Ah. In it, it has the intro as starts as always, but some differences. First off, Happy didn't dance in the intro but started the main characters, sort of like, like crime scene investigation intro. After that, 
It then cuts to a scene where Happy Appy's in his van, but there are, there are two girlfriends in his passenger seat. The girls were clear were clay heads and on sticks, like Hap like Appy. After driving for a while, Happy parks in the camp and gets a washcloth and sits on it, as well as the girls. They just sit there, staring at the sky. After a few seconds, another apple appears, sort of like the ben those bench bullies you see in the movies as teenagers in the bench. And Happy says, Move it, ladies. Although the quality makes it s it sounds like move it, ladies, for a second thing that Happy Appy does not have an IMDB page. The page of some people are mistaking it as an actual TV show called Happy Apple. I could understand why people would think it, they would be related to Happy Appy. Happy Apple being rarely used for a full title of Happy Appy, but it was from the 1980s. How can you confuse a TV show from the 80s about insurance company with Nick Jr., the show from the 90s that's an imagery of a certain incident? September 4th, 2011. Earlier today, I received an email about the Happy Appy and the Golden Apple. It was from the person on eBay that I bought the game from. He said that he left it out a sound file for the game and sent it to me. It was an MP3 file that was about a minute long. I played it and no sound came out. It was almost zero bytes in size, so I deleted it, thinking it was just a blank sound file. I was wrong. Remembering that it was still in my head and recycling bin, I looked there and luckily figured it out that I had not emptied it. I am trying to find a way to decode it. September 5th, 2011. When I first tried to decode it, I just heard static. Then I tried reversing it, changing it to a pitch, even adding volume with successful results. At first, it was just a sound of happy, happy laughing. Not just regular laugh, but a scary, hurtling, painful laugh. Then Happy started screaming, and you could hear someone in the background laughing now. Again, it sounded like a person that was laughing was killing someone. But it was also injured, so I could think that it was a child struggling against Happy to try to kill him. But that's just my guess. September 6, 2011. After 12 pages of Google search... I found someone who said that they were a survivor of the staff who made Happy Happy. I was excited to get and I got their addresses so I could meet them in person. I took the long way because the directions they gave me required me to go through a lonely dirt road and I thought that I would get my shoes dirty. Hey, can't be too cautious, can't I? Well, anyway, I was in an angle where I could see the person who was standing near the, his house. I was right about to yell out to them, but as I got closer and looked and freaked out, it was Forensnik, standing near the house behind the door of the building I was supposed to pass. If I passed it, Forensnik would have caught me off guard and stabbed me to death. I didn't know why Forensnik set this up, but he is definitely out to get me. He was definitely looking me at the way I was supposed to that I have come through then so quickly. Looking at it as if it was for a decoration. His arms were bony and skinny, looking like he needed to put on 20 pounds to be considered underweight. He then started to get more and more nervous, thinking I wasn't going to show up. I decided to run and tell you about his near-death experience, because it will probably happen more and more often. September 7th, 2011 since I was freaked out by Forensnik and it was nearing the incident, I decided to check out the Towers episode again. When I played it, I heard a faint whining noise in the background of the recording, and I instantly recognized that it was quieter version with the decoded sound I was talking about two days ago. I didn't know why that sound was there, but it was. I still can't imagine that video matches with the sound clip. September 8th. 2011. I realized it must be Forensnik and Happy Happy fighting. I figured it out because I was getting my groceries. Because of that encounter, I carried a switchblade with me at all times when I go out of the house, just to be on the safe side. I saw a police car with its lights and sirens blaring on my way home, 
and decided to follow it. When I when it stopped, I saw Forensnik drop a gun and something red and ran away. I left the police to run after him and looked at the red thing. It was an apple with the face on it. The happy appy figure. I could have sworn that I saw its mouth moving. But I was so freaked out that I'm not sure. I went back home and looked for the happy appy figure and it was gone. Forensnik must have broken into my house while I was out and stolen happy appy from me. September 9th, 2011. I'm not sure, but maybe this file was on a different episode of Happy Appy and the planned future and got mixed up when they were putting the sound files in. I already have no clue why Forensnik was fighting with Happy Appy. When he around when Happy and Appy were made, made, he put himself on being one of the episodes because he was in the staff or was just infamous around the time and the makers decided that he would be perfect material. I really still can't put this together. Today, I also read the news and discovered that the crazed maniac was arrested for a robbery at the gun store, a home break-in and use of weaponry without permit, and invading an arrest. Sometimes I ask myself why I choose to get involved in Happy Appy. September 10th, 2011. While tomorrow is the 10th anniversary of you know, that incident that happened a long time ago, I had lots of thoughts about the head today. I will be visited by Forensnik again, or I will have a normal day for once? Will my house be burned down again, or will I be murdered in my own sleep? Well, I'm not going to make the, a post on... September 11th, but on September for, for 12th. Oh, and here's a revolution of the list with season 2 unreleased episodes. The duets are properly listed. Season 1, Happy a Happy's Vacation, Her to Happy, The Monkey Bars Incident, Happy Goes to School, Nate Needs Help, Never Run With Knives, Happy Fixes Kids, Happy Fixes Kids Part 2, Happy Fixes Kids Part 3, The Two Towers, Happy and the Doctor, Mean Miranda, Happy's Trick, Possible Second Half of the Duet, The Happy Happy Movie Part 1, The Happy Happy Movie Part 2, Season 2, Happy Meets the Rue Bears, Camp A, Possibly Vice Versa, September 11th, 2011. I know I'm not supposed to make a post on September 11th, but I just had to get this out. Last night, someone went on my computer today, and luckily the only things Forensnik did were a couple of free to be exact. Photos of badly distorted sound clips and images that were made today during 12 to 2.20 a.m. and 2.30 a.m. The sound clip was made on April 9th, 2005. Odd, all the images were likely used by Paint.net. Since I do not have a fancy art program like Photoshop, I removed the MS Paint from my computer. I have Paint.net, and the file name was Image 1 to Image 3, and they were badly drawn, but I expected that, because Forensnik had a gas mask on, and he has long fingers not to use fit for my mouse. The first image was Happy Happy, during the natural scene of the Towers episode. It was done in black pencil brush due to me knowing a lot about paint. It seemed to have taken the least amount of time to do. The second image was only not only that, but not show of a person or a thing, but it is a fact a portion of the song. They're coming to take me away, aha. I wonder, what is the connection between Napolitan and XIV and Happy Happy and Forensnik? Is it something they're both disturbing to listen to? The final image was more disturbing than the rest. Forensnik stands behind a black background, which has I'll find you in red. The, the photo of it was more interesting. Because it showed a shot of Forensnik, actually being more high quality than the other photo I took of him, even though it is quite bland, showing his long pale neck and his usual gas mask with red eyes and a happy, happy grin. Yet, no filters. Maybe on the back of his head? Oh yes, about the sound clip. It starts off with a bunch of ambience, 
That sounds like it was just becoming a factory. Metal banging from steam blowing and all that stuff. It might be possible that it's all just some sort of distortion. But then I heard a person walking, kicking over an empty tin can. I suddenly heard a noise that sounded like someone was banging and beginning from to say stop before it goes to static for the rest of the clip. I assumed it was forensic killing someone, which is most likely. September 12, 2011. Today was one of the worst days I've ever had, but at the same time, it was n also one of the best. To start off, I was coming home after getting late groceries on September 11th when I noticed Forensnik was crossing the road to my house. I decided to run him over, so I sped up and had the car hit him at full force. I heard a couple of bones breaking, and I knew I must have injured or possibly killed him. So I got out of my car, and to my surprise, I couldn't find Forensnik. Although, he made a trail of blood which pointed to where he went, so I followed the blood. The trail led me to a nearby forest in a couple of miles out of town. I have no doubt about it. Forensnik had ran off into the woods and is possibly ready to attack me if I go in too deep. I put those aside because I knew I had one thing to do. I had to kill Forensnik. So I got on my switchblade from my car and went into the forest. The blood led down a dirt trail that would take anyone who followed to the abandoned summer camp. The summer camp was opened in 1996 as John Wigginson Summer Camp. The owner of the summer camp was John Wigginson, a 35-year-old man who had schizophrenia. For years, it was a very popular summer camp. Even people all the way from Maine come here. Unfortunately, in 2004, John Wilkinson's schizophrenia reached a peak, and around 2 at night, John got an axe and went to the log cabins and killed six children before disappearing. The case remains cold to this day. So I went to the first cabin, A. The cabin series are A, 16-18 year olds, B, 13-15 year olds, C, 10-12 year olds, and D, 9-7-9 year olds. It looked like a regular cabin, minus the fact that blood was on the walls, the beds were undone, and some of the wood was rotting. Oh, and there's an axe stuck onto the wall. Obviously, since the axe was a better weapon than a switchblade, I took the axe. I then went to B and axed down the door. It was the same as A. Axed down C's door, and it still had the same as A. Finally, I axed down D's door. As I walked in, I noticed the sound of the generator running. After turning the lights on, I was horrified. One of the walls had bodies of Kevin Van Costo, Blair Myers, and Miranda held up by hooks. Then behind me, I heard a slivering noise. Do you like my trophies? I jumped and turned around. It was Ferenc Nick with a butcher knife. He was wearing a black robe with his trademark gas mask. Go on, take a closer look. When he said that, I was both horrified and intrigued, so I decided to walk up to the body of Kevin. It had three slice marks on him, with the skin was peeling half gone. His jaw was positioned to make it look like he was laughing. I had to do something. There was a broken mirror next to Kevin's body. I picked it up and saw Ferenc Nick in a chair, sharpening a knife. So you found me at last. Congratulations. What the hell did you do with them? I screamed. It seemed like the only thing I could say. Well, since you asked, I'll tell you what I did. They were people who had annoyed me. To a certain extent. Kevin cost though, kept asking me and calling me slow and, well, other names. So when you were still watching those 10 episodes, I managed to find him, so I killed him. And then I watched you enter the house with that photo of Happy Happy. What about Blair Mares and Miranda? I squeaked. Blair was the voice of Happy Happy. And I wondered why they got a teenager to voice Happy Happy, even though I should have done that. So who told you about Blair's death? Was it Jim Forrester? I was shocked, but I slowly nodded my head. Forensnik then sharpened another knife. Finally, Miranda, you see. Happy Happy didn't kill her with his van. He actually killed her with the knife she was using to, for self-defense. And I took the body.
go ahead and get closer to the bodies. For an instant, got up from the chair and started pushing me towards the Blair's body. I had a broken mirror, and I noticed for instant was slowly holding up a second knife. He sharpened with his left hand to backstab me. No! I screamed. Before taking out the axe and striking at his left arm, he screamed in agony while I chopped off the arm. After chopping off his arm, I grabbed his arm and ran off. Finally, I, I found a can of gasoline. I dumped the gasoline all over the house, and when I was finished, Fronenska woke up, grabbing his chopped arm, then realized what I was doing. I grabbed his weapons and ran off. Then I got a match and burned the cabin down. It felt satisfying to make Fronenska homeless.